In the event the chain of friendship is not polished, we understand that we cease to become allies. When you, vis when you visited Canada in 2010, you recognized our relationship through our custom of exchanging gifts. At that time, you made reference to relationships by engraving bells recognizing our 300-year alliance. As such, as part of our allied relationship, we are required to bring issues to you when they concern your citizens. Currently, our allies of the Wet'suwet'en Nation are under surveillance and attack from your Royal Canadian Mounted Police. The Wet'suwet'en are living within their traditional territories, protecting their lands from invasion by pipeline companies and the man camps that conduct the work. As you are aware, the pipelines are currently in use, are wreaking havoc on the environment worldwide. Along with the companies come the man camps, which are a serious health and safety concern for Indigenous people in Canada, since there is a direct correlation between the man camps and the safety of Indigenous women. The Wet'suwet'en do not want the pipelines to cross their lands, nor do they want the man camps on their lands. To date, the Wet'suwet'en have established their camps within the territories and are maintaining their position. and therefore the lands are solely theirs. There are ten stages of genocide and then in this instance the Wet'suwet'en, the pipeline companies, the RCMP and the government of Canada are colluding against the Wet'suwet'en and other indigenous nations. Canada, specifically Prime Minister Trudeau and Governor General Payette like to speak on a national and international scale about the uniqueness of Canada and the relationship with indigenous people. Furthermore, they like to speak about their truth and reconciliation policies, but they continue to complete acts of genocide when the rest of the world isn't looking. The issue with the Wet'suwet'en is but one example of the lack of truth and the smoke and mirrors related to the truth and reconciliation. As the only living head of state who served in World War II against the genocidal acts of Hitler, and the only living head of state who remembers the fear and chaos of the Blitz, you can understand the fear and chaos which we as Indigenous people must live. We live under the sphere and chaos in our daily lives, and more so on a global scale when we speak out against the injustices that we face. We would ask that you exert your sovereignty over the citizens of your commonwealth in restoring the peace with the indigenous people in the territory and order them to withdraw from Wet'suwet'en territory. We believe that this issue is of great importance as it concerns the safety and well-being of our friends and allies. We hope that you will take this under consideration and will assist in addressing this issue. We look forward to hearing you with hearing from you with respect to this request. In peace and friendship. So it's sent to um, it's sent to Justin Trudeau, the right honorable Julie Payette, the Governor General, yourself, the Honorable Mark Miller, Minister of Indigenous Services, Elizabeth Tetchi Tetchi Filsberger, the President of the United Nations Human Rights Council and Victoria Tali Corpez, the UN Special Rapporteur of the Rights of Indigenous People. So I've been poised to ask the question before we get out of the hole and get some of the meat. Why didn't they come to post the chain for two guys to stand in the snow and the cold this long? We, we asked before they even came here. You can't put this on us that we're the cause of this because we asked you. You're still obligated to uphold. We don't get, they don't grow riskers. The river of life is still flowing. There's no
about now is over the last year, very small steps. to be known by your population that you ignored our request. Not just you as a person. You're, you're, you're coming here representing your country. And if you're not here, you're coming here representing the crown and the country. And the governor general really should be here and we'll talk about that some more. Because I believe that um, your friend um, Justin Trudeau, he said it's not his job to hold the RCMP back. I believe that uh, the Governor General uh, certainly can. Because they're the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and they are under the direction of the Crown. If there is a way that we can navigate this. But we have to be creative. under threat by the OPP. Also, I want to tell you a little bit of story. There's a reason why we're here. You see, in 1823, they came here to survey surveyed a five mile tract of land across our territory. And we never agreed to it. And 70 of our warriors came out here, but there was only 300 people that came from our village. So you can imagine that 70 warriors is nearly a third of our population. And they threw those surveyors out and said, you can't be here. This is our territory as protected for us forever. But you see, they wanted to put in a road, because they said the road that we made, the York Road, it was too uncivilized. And they wanted a civilized road so that white people could travel from Montreal to Toronto and not have to go through the wild land of the Indians. And when we threw out the surveyors and said, you can't do that, this is our land and it's protected. And we, we were made a promise that this is our land forever. 
for our free use and enjoyment. They threatened us with the army. They told us if we came back over here, they would come with the army to us. And so we have a special army. What happened to them last week is exactly what was done to us right here. And this is our land. We're not off the reserve. You put train tracks on our land. You put highway too. It was the first major highway on our land. And then you put the 401 on our land. But it's our land. Forever. Because the, the people in town think that uh, just because you're occupying that uh, it's over. That that's all done. It's called invasion. You don't get to go to Japan, pull the people out, take their land. No, you go to war against them, you still have to leave them their land. And in fact, you have to go and rebuild them. And then they come with an injunction and tell the people that they can't be on their own land. That they're trespassing. said something, they said there's angry people here. I know these people. They're my people. I love them all. But they're not angry. It'd be healthy if they were angry. <laughs> <laughs> done in this with us. They're afraid that they're plotting now to bring your army to us again. This ain't the first time. And if they come and we repel them, that's what will happen. So we should get away from the camera so we can actually talk. And I know you're not going to say a word because you've probably been told not to. <laughs> I wasn't told it was told anything. I have to tell you something. The last time this happened was in 1900. Oh, wait a minute. That happened in Caledonia. They come to talk to the U.S. and there. Before that, in 1990. It's always when there's a big crescendo. How come we got a, how come a train will have to stop in the whole country? us to pull on the chain. Come this car, how come we gotta pull that hard? Oh, you want the bread system? I don't know that. Anyways, uh, we're gonna make circles if we don't, uh, if we don't, uh, stop. Welcome to our territory. just with your, your friends here. And uh, it's a lot easier to get to where we gotta eat. <laughs> 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 